Hmm, what's on the radio? Love you. I only have enough love for the few. Ooh, the few. He's so masculine and manly with those black leather boots and those square mustache and the way that his hair diagonally flicks across his forehead like that all the time. Ooh, ooh, the few. That's when I fell for the leader of the cult. Vroom, 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 vroom. The return of the people of Israel to the land of Israel after being in exile for 2,000 years is the fulfillment of the prophecies in Ezekiel 36 and other places in the prophets. It shows that Hashem has divine providence over the world and has fulfilled his prophecies that he made 2,000 years ago in the prophet Ezekiel 36 and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Daniel, which all prophesied thousands of years ago that the Jewish people returned to the land. Hashem fulfilled those prophecies. It shows that the Torah is of divine origin. We're here today on AM Radio talking about the effects of gay priests and organized religion on children. And with us today we have Father Pat McGroin and Reverend Phil McCrevis here to talk a little bit more about the subject with us. Well, what do you think about this? We in the South, ooh, it gets hot down there. We have a fondness for organized religion. Yeah, that, that's very interesting. Okay, now, what does Reverend uh, Pat McGroin think? We have a musical uh, rendition of your opinion. Let's hear that. Hmm, that's very interesting. Now we'd like to go to the children and ask them co some questions. What do you think about the gay priests in the church? How do they affect you? My name's Jimmy. I'm 10 years old. Father Phil McCrary calls me his little teddy bear. He likes to play Bounce the Teddy Bear in the confessional. Bounce the Teddy Bear, Bounce the Teddy Bear. He even once gave me a bicycle. Sometimes he even lets me do it to him. Now, Jimmy, I'm only going to say this once. I'm a holy man. If you talk that way about me, you're going to go to hell. So never say a word about this to anyone. Okay. We have some confusion here. We're not really sure what's going on or what to do. So let's like clarify it. So we're going to go to Rabbi Ben David of the House of David. Rav Nachman of Breslov says in Luke Te Moran, chapter 12, that basically in the exile, in the Gullis, that most of the scholars, they are opposed to the Tadi king. Which means that you have most of the scholars opposed to the Mashiach. So organized religion is opposed to the Mashiach. Part-time Jew, I just do mitzvahs that I want to do. Hey, buddy, when you got as much money as I got, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> he can't be the Mashiach. His tribal just isn't fluffy enough. I think you might be placing too much emphasis on the way you think the Mashiach looks. Maybe you should be looking more at his deeds and who he actually is. Fantasy Rob, I've been dreaming of my fantasy Rob. Fantasy Rob, I've been dreaming of my fantasy Rob. I noticed you mentioned the importance of a tzaddik being the leader of the, of the people, the religion, and government. What is a tzaddik? A tzaddik literally means righteous person. We learn from the Torah and life that a person needs to be connected to and learn from a righteous, wise, and morally pure Torah-observant Jew, a tzaddik, in order for him to serve Hashem in wholeness, be cured or saved from a dangerous situation or disease, to learn Torah properly, and for the righteous Mashiach to be revealed. We learn these from the sources in Yura Deah 243 Gimel, Bavli Tani Zayin, the Graz Evan Shleimah chapter on how to learn Torah, points 17 and 18, Sefer Chinuch 497, and Breslav Advice and Sefer Midot chapters Tzadik and Honor, points 10 to 12, 27, 28, and from Mishle 10, which talks about the Tzadik Yesod Olam, the Tzadik being the foundation of the world and human society. These blessings that come through the Tzadik come from the wisdom, truthfulness, holiness, and, and prophecy of the Tzadik. How does one determine who is a real Tzadik? In Parshat Noach, the 
first Rashi tells us that a tzaddik is characterized most notably by good deeds for the sake of heaven, not mere Torah wisdom or to show off, as the Gona Vilna mentions in the chapter on Torah study in, in Evan Shlema, and, and Rav Nachman Abraslov talks about extensively in his works. A tzaddik is morally pure and lives by the Torah covenant, he's Shomer Habrit. In our times of trial and danger, people need to be connected with the true tzaddik just in order to live. We learn from many sources, such as Daniel chapter 7 and 11, that the Jewish people in the world, in the broader sense of Israel, there are many Gentiles who are righteous and good people who are included in Israel, are now living in what's called the exile of Edom. Ancient Rome was an emanation of Edom, and today now we're living in modern Edom with modern frivolities and ways of throwing off the yoke of heaven and euphemistic ways of saying that, such as the term secular society. And this modern Edom, similar to modern Rome, puts itself over everything and everyone as if it has been the true way, but is not the true way. The true way is to live in harmony with the Creator, which means that the Jewish people must live by the Torah and its commandments, and the Gentiles must live by the Noahide covenant and the seven Noahide commandments. This question authority. Unless he is anointed by heaven like King David and his sons from the house of David, based David, then the person has no right.